Here we go, calculus fans. We've got another definite integral. We're integrating from one to six. You'll notice again from the question to the board, I've done the first step of rewriting this. Um, that square root would create a half power and bringing it up would make that a negative, a half power. We've had that discussion many times when we've done derivatives as well as integrals. That whole rewrite process, fractional exponents, negative exponents, and again, similar to the previous examples, there is a product here. It would be great to be able to multiply that into the parentheses, but the exponent takes precedence over that. So the point would be, I think that's all the algebra rewrite we could possibly do here. And if we have an integral that is comprised of a product in calc one, we can't handle it. Calc two, maybe so, all right? So keep that in mind. Um, so this is, again, a definite integral. We're going to use substitution, and so it would make sense, I hope, that you would set u equal to the x plus 3, as mentioned here, the quantity being raised to a power. So, in our new integral that we're going to run off and evaluate, we would now have the fact that that would be u to the negative 1 half power. u to the negative 1 half power is going to take the place of that quantity to the negative a half power. All right, so u takes the place of that. Always, always build a dx and see what happens. So again, that's always the motivation behind differentiating both sides with respect to x, and that'd be a one, right? dx dx, otherwise known as one. And if we, so, so to speak, clear the fraction, we determine that in this example, du equals dx. I notice sometimes du equals dx, but other times an additional expression falls in our lap. So just do it and see what happens, all right? So it looks like du will take the place of dx. Boom. You will notice, though, that the x squared sitting out here did not somehow fall in our lap. Sometimes it does. It did not happen this time. If that happens, after you build that dx from your original substitution, and you happen to have an additional expression sitting out here, that's where I would tell you, you need to build it. You need to construct it. And it's always constructed from this, the original substitution. So I always bring this over here and go, all right, I need to build me an x squared from this relationship. And I would always tell you, first thing to do would be to solve it for x. Build yourself an x. It's just being kind of algebraically creative. So we find out that u minus 3 would equal x. That's cool. That's the x out here. But the original integral said x squared. So, okay, you'd hopefully take this and go, let's square both sides now. And that'll give us x squared. And while we're at it, why don't we distribute this out? If you speak English, first, out, or inner, last, FOIL. And you would need to do that again because of the subtraction that's here. This is just algebra, so if you distribute that or FOIL it out, <coughs> it's u squared minus 6u plus 9. And you might think, well, that new integral over there is going to be just as complicated as the original. In, yes, in some respects, but it's going to be a different kind of complicated, if that makes sense. So, in this original integral back here, it looks like the x squared can be replaced with this thing, this algebraic expression. u squared minus 6u plus 9. And you're like, I thought the whole point was to get simpler. This looks just as complicated. But, as I mentioned, it's a different kind of complicated. It's got a different algebra structure that's going to work for us. We'll get to that in a minute. It's still a product, but it's a different kind of product. I get ahead of myself. We also need to remember, change your limits of integration. That would be easy to forget. And again, everything is built off of that original substitution, you'll notice. So if we take the value of 1 for x in the original x question and put it in for x, 1 plus 3, u would equal 4. So that lower limit over here needs to be a 4, all right? Look, Mr. Soggy Bog has 
graded a lot of papers, and I would say the one step in this that we usually forget to do is to change those limits of integration. Remember to do that. All right, and then six, you plug that in for x. These are values of x. That's our inter interval on the x-axis. You put six in for x, six plus three is nine, and so u would equal nine. And goodbye, x. I'm never coming back, x. I'm running off, I'm jumping over here to you, and I'm gonna finish the question from here. This is something that we could have given you on a previous assignment. This is, given the tools we know at this point, something we can integrate. It's still a product, but you know what? Unlike the one back there, we can distribute the u to the negative a half into these parentheses. And this is gonna ger generate terms and powers, and we're gonna be able to finish the thing off. So, we have the integral from four to nine. All right, properties of exponents. You add the powers in a case like this. So two and negative a half, that would be equal u to the three halves. Minus six, that's u to the first. And the first power and the negative a half power would make the half power. And that's gonna be plus nine u to the negative a half. And this is where we go, I get it. We can integrate u. This is now terms with powers. And we can go through and do that uh, terms and powers idea. So now we can integrate this. We find the antiderivative. See, we're at that step here that we talked about before using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Yes, you know what? I can, we can find the antiderivative of this expression, unlike that one. So applying the power rule to each term, this will become u to the 3 halves plus 1, which is 5 halves, and then over 5 halves becomes times 2 fifths. See, we're finding that antiderivative. Minus 6u to the n plus 1, right? It's the opposite of derivative. You add 1 to the power, that's 3 halves, and then divide by 3 halves, which is multiplied by two thirds, and then plus nine u, negative a half plus one is positive a half, and then dividing by a half is multiplying by two. So again, that'd be nine times that. But the point is, this is the capital F of x, the antiderivative, and then we transfer the symbol from integrate. You see, we just, we just integrated. We found the antiderivatives of those terms using the power rule. And we'll go, now it's time, friends, to evaluate from four to nine. So this will be that step we talked about on the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then the next step, of course, is to evaluate, whereby we go stick the nine in here for all those u's, and then we'll stick the four in for all the u's. Stick the nine in, crunch it out, stick the four in, crunch it out, and subtract the two. That's arithmetic, all right? So we're far enough into this. And I don't have all the board space that I would love to have. I gotta be a total snob again, ready? You guys know what I'm about to say, one, two, three. That's just arithmetic, all right? So if we go do the arithmetic on this, which I did ahead of time in order to save us the time, it turns out that that should equal 132 over five, which y'all could decimalize if you want. Doesn't matter to me, fraction decimal, you give me the appropriate decimal equivalent to that, I think I'd be fine with that. Uh, I think it's like 26.4. Does that sound right? I hope my arithmetic's right. 26.4. Uh, 26. Point, I think so. That would be about two tenths of a mile more than a marathon, wouldn't it? Which, having run 50 of them now, I'll tell you that typically you run at least that far when you run one because you kind of miss some of the corners. You don't run the tangents and you deviate from the course sometimes, stuff like that. So anyway, good luck.